bring in Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett. Uh, Congressman, um, tell me first of all, I, I, I want to talk about Kevin McCarthy. There's a lot of talk about what's going to happen with him. Uh, and and I, I guess what I wonder is if he doesn't get the majority number of votes required to become the speaker, what happens then? A lot of uh, gnashing of teeth, I guess, and a lot of deal cutting, <laughs> and then a lot of pressure, and then basically nothing. I think you're, you're going to see a lot of people, you know, they enjoy the spotlight when they're being put in this kind of position, and then they, they take some people for granted, and then you have somebody just come out of the blue that you never thought would vote one way, and they'll go the other way. So you're dealing with a lot of different egos. So just about anything could happen, I would think. I, I think I, uh, the deal to cut, of course, is the um, is, is the uh, vacating the speaker position. The the one person can do that. I think that's that's where they're moving towards. And I would hope that we could get to some conclusion before tomorrow. Yeah, it seems to me the voting needs to take place before the voting takes place officially. I, I guess, okay, I'm going to throw this out here because uh, it's just crazy, but without being sure that Kevin McCarthy or someone else would have the, the number of votes that they need, uh, there's been something thrown out there. You don't have to be a member of Congress. What if 212 Democrats said they would vote for Liz Cheney, and then you get six Republicans that say, yeah, we're more conservative, or actually we're more liberal than, than the, uh, somebody like Kevin McCarthy, and all of a sudden you have a Liz Cheney. Now, again, this is crazy, but I mean, there could be unintended consequences, right? Oh, 100%. I think Newt Gingrich called it right. It could, we could be in, into some chaos or uncharted territory, I guess, and maybe in 200 years ago, something like this happened. But I don't think there's, you're going to see some defections. I think that's just the threat being made for Liz Cheney. That would be political suicide. I think her numbers in her own district showed her popularity. And, and yeah, she's popular with the Democrat base. And they'll, they'll probably float her out as a VP candidate or something. And, and that won't happen. They won't do it. They always say that. And they pull back at the last minute. And that's just a bunch of baloney. Okay. Um, I, it's just it's just going to be a fist fight. It's what it's going to be. It's going to be ugly, and it's going to be a fist fight. Yeah, but uh, the, the, it used to be. Honest. It used to be, Congressman. Those that that ugly part, the fist fights were in those smoke filled rooms, right? But now it, it gets done more in, in public. So uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. I mean, I'll get my popcorn. I think it's going to be interesting. But but tell me, uh, you're you're a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, what kinds of investigations, if any, or what kinds of legislation would would you like to see? Well, first of all, um, you know, our, our southern border, which is a, a foreign entity, it, it's going to have to we're going to have to to lock that down. The the influx of fentanyl and things like that. And of course, China is our is our number one threat right now. And nobody seems to be paying much attention to that. We spent $100 billion to secure the border uh, or try to help Ukraine secu secure their border. We haven't secured ours. The Chinese are watching us. I kept thinking the other night when everybody was cheering, when the, the very brave Ukrainian leader was there, are they going to be cheering when China rolls into Taiwan? And so I think we're going to have to really, really buckle down and address this issue with China. Under Trump, uh, they they were at the table and they weren't making the moves they're making now. But under this presidency, it, it's wide open. And I'm afraid that they, they will have a green light. And that, that scares me. Talk is cheap. And then when you start talking about sending American boys and girls over there to fight, that's another thing. And we don't need yeah. to go down that. And I'm afraid we could be moving towards that in Europe as well. Wow. That, that, you, you think that there could be proposed uh, American soldiers put on the ground? I assume you're talking about Ukraine? Yeah. I mean, this, this, this reeks of Vietnam. I mean, you know, we, we sent advisors, money over. right? They sent in advisors first. Advisors, you know, and I do. And somebody needs to ask that question now or some of these people over there. Maybe they're, they're not American under the American flag, but are they, are they mercenaries of sorts? And is that sort of a wink and a nod thing? I think that's that's things that we should we should look at. Um, yeah. Is that is that are you comfortable with that happening? And that's where because we really are having a proxy war with Russia now, a country that their GDP is somewhere between France and Canada. Yeah, and you have to 
Yeah, the raise, Russian GDP uh, is like a gas station. That's what they do. They sell oil. Uh, before we go, we've got about 20 seconds. What's it like taking the oath of office to, be, uh, to become a member of Congress again? It's, a, it's an incredible honor. Uh, you know, it's, there's a 48-star flag behind my desk right there. That was on my uncle's casket in the Second World War. He died fighting in the hedgerows. He was too old to go, and he volunteered, and they called him back up. My daddy fought in the Pacific, fought the Japanese. My mama flew an airplane during the Second World War. Um, you know, I, I stand on some incredible shoulders right now, and it was, it was just an incredible honor. I, I do not take myself serious, but I take the job deadly serious. And it is an incredible honor that the people of the 2nd Congressional District of Tennessee have placed on me. Congressman, thank you for your service and for your family's service and sacrifices. Thank you so much for being with us, and a Happy New Year to you, sir. Thank you, brother. It's always a pleasure. Happy New Year's to y'all, y'all.